right. All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. Uh, we um, broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and then it is posted to our library commission, our, our website for you to watch later at your convenience. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so uh, please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the shows we have on Encompass Live. Um, we do a variety of things on the show, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we have guest speakers that come in sometimes um, to present for us, and we have the Nebraska Library Commission staff that come in sometimes to uh, present for us. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, but I did want to mention uh, uh, a couple of things here about the show before we get into today's topic. Um, Encompass Live, I mentioned we have a recording, so I'll show you when we get there. Um, Encompass Live first premiered in January 2009. And our that is, so as of the end of last year, we have 15 years of Encompass Live. This is the beginning of our 16th year. Wow. Oh my gosh, <laughs> That's a lot of that is a lot, <laughs> yes. And I'm going through some statistics, I'm going to try to put together some sort of a blog post or something of exactly okay. um, what Rod had mentioned, you know, want you know, like where all of our presenters are from across the years. We've had presenters from all across the country, and I think from outside the country a few times too. Um, and uh, maybe even Canada too. So it's 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 a lot, yeah. Um, we have done, I did look up, we have done 738 shows. Um, every year we take off the one year or the one week that's during our NLA conference. Um, and then since COVID start, um, the pandemic started in 2020, there's been some times here and there we've had to take off um, presenters have had COVID, um, various issues um, have happened over the last couple of years. So usually there's two or three a year that we don't do. But we have a total as of last week, the end of last December, 738 um, shows, 15 years. And they're all out there. You want to go watch them? <laughs> um, so I'm pretty proud. This is just an idea I came up with as my previous work I was doing at the commission was wrapping up, and I had been doing monthly webinars about that, some things. I said, you know, weekly webinar about some about everything libraries do. We'll see what goes. Fifteen years still later. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that'd be awesome. Our first two shows were Meet the NLC shows. Meet the NLC part one and part two. Um, we started out with introducing people to what we are, who we are, and what we do here. So I uh, thought it'd be a good idea to do that again. Um, probably need an update 15 years later. <laughs> now we have had people on from different departments to talk about things they're doing over the years, of course, and in their different areas too. But this is going to be, um, there's, this is, as I mentioned, two part. Um, we've got four people today and for people next week um, from the different departments in our Nebraska Library Commission agency here, they're gonna talk about um, who are we, what is the Library Commission, who are we, and what do we do here? Everything you ever wanted to know. Um, if you do have any questions throughout the show, type into your questions section if you go to webinar interface, I'm monitoring that here, and I can, um, I'll grab any of your questions or comments or anything for our uh, presenters today. Um, so first up, we do have the um, director of the Library Commission, Rod Wagner. Good morning, Rod. Good morning and Happy New Year to everyone. Yes, Happy New Year. <laughs> Kicking off the uh, new year with this program. And my uh, assigned uh, purpose this morning is to uh, offer some introduction and it's good that I start because my colleagues can correct any mistakes I make in my remarks. <laughs> I'm thankful for that. Uh, but to uh, jump uh, way back, the Library Commission was created in 1901, celebrated our 100th year back in early 2000. The commission is part of the executive branch of Nebraska state government. And 
per state statutes, the commission is responsible for the statewide promotion, development, and coordination of library services. Uh, that is, that was actually uh, uh, the uh, statutory purpose that was uh, written into state law back in 1972. I, I'm not sure if that same, uh, I don't believe that same uh, statement was uh, in the statutes prior to that time. But in fulfilling those functions, the commission works with all types of libraries, as well as doing many things for uh, uh, directly with the public. Uh, the commission was renamed in 1972. Prior to that, it was the Nebraska Public Library Commission, and the change emphasized the uh, coordinating role and the uh, uh, intent that the commission work with all types of libraries and support all types of libraries throughout Nebraska. Also in 1972, and you'll, you'll hear more about this later, um, but, uh, uh, the 1972 laws included the creation of the Nebraska Publications Clearinghouse with a re responsibility for uh, providing government information services and collecting and providing access to state publications. But again, you'll hear more about that in a little while. Um, a word about state library agencies. Every state has a state library agency. Also, uh, U.S. territories have um, uh, somewhat the equivalent of a state library agency as well. And that, uh, in part, is due to the Federal Library Program, the Library Services and Technology Act, which has a major uh, commitment of funding that is allocated to the states um, under the Grants to States programs. Um, the, uh, the commission is one of many boards and commissions in Nebraska state government. Um, I, I don't have the exact number, but I, I think it's somewhere in the number of uh, 80 or more. And again, others may correct me on that. Uh, <laughs> we have. No, no correction. Nobody shares it either. Lots, there are lots <laughs> of us, and, and the commission is among those. And what that means is, um, as a non-code agency, code agencies are those that are uh, directly under the governor. Non-code agencies are those that have a different governance structure. The commission has a six-member board. Those individuals are appointed by the governor. They serve a three-year term, and they can be appointed to a second term. Um, traditionally, the um, commission members are appointed from the regional library regional library system areas. Um, and up until uh, several years ago, we had six uh, regions. Now we um, have restructured in recent years to four. So uh, uh, the, the governor is not in any way obligated to following that, but for the most part, governors have in that um, a, an appointment is made from each of the regions, and then there are two at-large members. Uh, however, currently, we do not have a representative from the Central Plains region, and we hope that will, uh, will change in the coming, well, actually, uh, this year when new appointments are made. Um, Funding, the Library Commission's funding is about 70% state and 30% 30 30 uh, federal. Again, the federal being the uh, Library Services and Technology Act allocation that is uh, appropriated annually. Uh, so we have a responsibility for administering the uh, LSCA, LSTA that is, and each year we or each every five years uh, we are required to conduct a uh, an evaluation of the federal library program in nebraska and also create a new five-year plan that is submitted to the uh, federal institute of museum and library services and part of that plan we have uh, major goals we have and a number of uh, objectives under those goals that we 
use as a uh, guide for distributing uh, funding and for uh, conducting programs and services that use that make use of those funds. So um, uh, Krista has asked us to uh, make presentations covering the major functions of the Library Commission ranging from uh, administrative services, planning and data services, reference and information services, uh, government information services, uh, technology and access services, talking book and braille services, and library development. So you'll be hearing about those um, shortly, beginning with those. Uh, one, one other thing I would mention about uh, state library agencies, um, Nebraska is one of those that is independent in that we are not directly under the governor. That is not the case in, in all states. Some state library agencies are part of their state department of education. They may be under the secretary of state. Um, they may be part of a larger um, department that includes uh, other functions such as economic development, um, parks and recreation, their arts and humanities and, and so forth. So they are different. Um, in uh, Among the surrounding states, we have the Wyoming State Library, Colorado State Library, Kansas State Library. Um, Iowa has a, has a different name, which I forget. Uh, it's under the uh, Department of Education in that, in that uh, state. Uh, what's interesting is that is that uh, we also have a Nebraska State Library, and so sometimes that uh, confuses individuals when they uh, are familiar with uh, other states. Um, and uh, the Nebraska State Library is is under the Supreme Court; it's the state law library, but it is the Nebraska State Library, and we are the Library Commission. So. Um, that's my introduction, and uh, I think we'll have time for questions later on. Yep. If anybody does have any questions, yeah, type them in when you think of them. Um, I will also mention too, while we're looking at the slides here, the links that are on here. Um, when the recording is available later, you will have we'll provide these slides as well. So all of these links in here, don't worry about trying to scrub them all down. There's going to be more in the future too. Um, you'll have these slides. Uh, maybe able to get to all the links that we have on here. They're all just through our website anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Yes. Rod, I was just thinking when I looked at my old program, everything changed. Everything? But not for you. Would that be true, Rod? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, in terms of governance and commission, number of systems has decreased, but right. were there things that really changed a lot? Since we did this 15 since years this ago. presentation 15, 15 years ago? Yeah, well, of course, uh, we have evolved along with the uh, many other with many trends such as technology and how we do things. We do a lot more, um, we provide many more services online, even though we were doing those uh, things uh, back uh, 15 years ago. Staffing and yeah. our structurally, <laughs> we're very much the same as we have been for a number of years. I know for the slides I just shared, these couple of slides for Rod, um, they're the same ones that we did use 15 years ago. I just had to change the links <laughs> for our website because our URL changed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But all the same information is in the same places on our website. Even though our website has changed, yes, we've yeah, designed it since. Website. Yes. So if you don't want, if you if you're interested, you can go back. Like I said, all of our archives there. You can go back and watch the this. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> From 15 years ago. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you so much, Rod. Um, we are now on to learn. You're up next. Okay, I'll have to talk quickly because I think I've crammed too much in here. <laughs> um, our computer team consists of three people um, myself, Vern Bias, uh, Dennis Cleavy, and his primary responsibilities are backups and archiving, email management, purchasing mailing lists, and hardware. And backups are a time-consuming and kind of thankless job that 
kind of seem like a lot of effort for little gain, but they're vital. We use them all the time. When someone needs something and they're there, it's yeah. not thankless. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's lots of thank yous. Yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> and Jenna Greaser is our help desk manager, and it's hard to define what she does because she has a hand in just about everything. And um, she is our primary support for the Mandarin Library Automation System and has really heavy involvement in all the websites and taking care of websites as well as mundane things like creditors and she, she we need two or three of her <laughs> yes <laughs> um, and my job is to kind of oversee everything try to spend some time on planning for future needs um, i've been spending more time on security issues lately than in previous years and that's kind of frustrating it feels like non-productive time but it's really important um, and that could easily be a full-time job and I also do quite a bit of programming which I enjoy that frequently involves um, interactive web pages forms various web services as well as programming that we use internally to manage and monitor things we try to cross train as much as we can but it's difficult everybody has more in-depth knowledge of certain things than the rest of us. So um, documentation is really important. We spend a lot of time trying to document for among ourselves and for future generations. That's an ongoing challenge. Um, our job is to manage the commission's computer infrastructure, which includes workstations and staff offices, public access workstations, servers, mm -hmm. printers, wireless access points, laptops, and the network that connects everything together internally and to the internet. Um, besides all the hardware, we also install, configure, and maintain an update software that makes everything work. There are frequent updates to software due to security vulnerabilities that are discovered. So that's a pretty time-consuming part of the job. And many, many other staff outside the computer team contribute to supporting and creating and maintaining uh, online services. So we, by no means, do it all alone. And they're, they're, it's, it affects everybody in some way or another. Um, and I recently realized that among the three of us, we have more than 100 years of, of combined experience. And I don't know whether to brag about that or apologize. For that. <laughs> we're, some of us are getting a little long in the tooth. Kern just got his gold watch. Yeah. <laughs> when I think about our job, the picture that always comes to mind is the old Ed Sullivan show and the circus acts where all the plates are spinning they're trying to keep all the plates spinning and i'm sure a lot of you can can identify with that that's kind of the nature of, of work um, let's see. um a big part of our job is working with the websites and i thought it was worth just highlighting those and maybe briefly talking about some of them uh, the main nlc website uh, Nebraska Access, Nebraska Memories, the Government Documents site, in campus Moodle, which is the training site, Center for the Book, One Book, One Nebraska, the NLC blog, and the Libraries on the Web websites, which there are currently 114 of those, where we provide websites for libraries that, that wish to use that service. Um, our main website is an attempt to bring together all the hundreds of services and resources that the Commission provides, and it's a real challenge to bring that together in a way that is accessible and easy to use. And um, when we designed the site, we went out and looked at all the other 49 um, state agency sites and hoping to find somebody who had found an idea that magically made this all work and we we really didn't find that so we did the best we could um it's far from perfect which we, we uh if i had one bit of advice for people when using our website i would say start with the search because we put a lot of effort into that and it's I, I think it's easier than than trying to maneuver through um, 
the flyout menus and all of the it's kind of a busy site and just unfortunate that it has to be that way. You put a lot of work into the search engine. Yeah. And you yeah. did that for me. And we all do. Uh, mm -hmm. People, as they realize that a given topic isn't covered very well by the search, will let us know and we'll focus on, mm -hmm. on improving that. And we really yeah. count on that and appreciate it. Um, I think we need to do the next step. I thought I'd highlight just a few of the notable online services that are pretty heavily used. There, This isn't all of them, but some of the ones that are pretty significant. The library directory gets a lot of use. That provides access uh, to staff and libraries of all types, public, academic, school, special, institutional. Um, I think that's it. Um, Library jobs database is heavily used and it provides listings for jobs not only in Nebraska but in contiguous states. Uh, the book club kits is heavily used. Uh, it's grown from a small collection to thousands of, <laughs> of titles and it's used heavily. There are various uh, things related to library accreditation including the application forms and uh, the the various uh, forms that contribute data to that. The library calendar focuses a lot on training. Um, staff certification is also a big, big uh, feature that's that's provided in many different ways and supported in many different ways on the website. Uh, we provide mailing lists, statewide mailing lists that are focused on various library topics, including one for each of the, the four systems. Um, Interlibrary loan is pretty heavily used, and that allows us to more efficiently process requests for interlibrary loans. The, the various grants that we offer all require application forms, so we, we spend quite a bit of time on those, and we, we welcome feedback on those. It's sometimes challenging to make them understandable, so if you're using one of the forms and see a problem, by all means, let us know. Overdrive and Libby, we don't post the actual service, but we provide authentication for a number of, of libraries. The books and series database is used nationwide. I, I mm -hmm. think it's not focused on Nebraska. It's, and I think Lisa will probably touch on that in her, her part of the presentation. Um, a couple of items that have appear on the front page, the libraries and the news, I think is pretty popular. It, brings together news articles from various news media that talk about Nebraska libraries. And the library buzz is harvested from the various uh, library websites and social media sites, so there's a lot of content there. Um, and the search feature on each of the websites is, is um, something that we've spent a lot of effort on. Um, I want to mention the Omnibase because it's kind of central to a lot of what we do. Years ago, in fact, it's probably like 30 years ago, um, we were struggling because when something needed to be updated, a staff change or email address change or anything like that, we might have had to make those changes in a dozen or more places. And it was real challenging, of course, to keep those all synchronized. So we decided to create what we now call the Omnibase, which is kind of a central database for all the information that we collect. And it includes staff data uh, for library staff, as well as our staff, um, addresses, emails, phone numbers. The library boards provide contact information, meeting schedules, um, and other information about library boards. And uh, the CE data, which includes certification status and attendance records for um, the certification, librarian certification program is also in, contained in the Omnibase. Um, I guess I'm getting lost in my notes here. <laughs> um, 
I think we're ready for the next slide. Okay. There's more on. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, you're right. <laughs> I did lose my place. Thank you. Um, we try to. We use many different sources to update the Omni base. We get reports from librarians and system directors. Those are important. The Bibliostat survey provides a lot of the data, especially the statistical data. The supplemental survey helps us to keep the directory information up to date, as well as um, things like social media sites, websites. Um, that's a really important part of what keeps the Omnibase up to date. Um, we also monitor news sources if we see that a library has changed its name or opened a new branch or something like that. We incorporate that into the Omnibase. And Dennis spends a lot of his time working with email bounces. Um, that tells us that something's wrong with an email address and he does research and figures out what needs to be done to make it, it accurate. Um, let's see. Let's see that. Um, and I want to finish up by uh, mentioning that we, like everybody, try to improve our services every day in every way we can think of. And some of the means that we use to do that include monitoring usage and making adjustments when we see things that, that aren't quite right, watching for problems. We get reports constantly and every 15 minutes letting us know if anything appears to be having problems and then we try to resolve them as quickly as possible. Uh, we love to incorporate suggestions from users. That's one of the most important ways that we can improve things. Um, implementing new and improved technologies is another means. And I really want to emphasize that we welcome and encourage your suggestions and problem reports. That's one of the best ways that we can, can address uh, making, this, making our services better. And that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, Krista had to step out of the room, so I think we're just going to go on to Lisa. And yeah, if you want to hand me that. Thank you. Let her continue our presentation. So I looked at my slides from 15 years ago. Nobody's here that was here 15 years ago. The website's different. We had a Twitter account. We had instant messaging. We had Mebo. Lots has changed for sure. So um, I wanted to just reintroduce you to our team and show you some pictures um, of who we are. So alphabetically by first name, Amy Owen comes to us from Elwood, Nebraska, and seems to know every librarian in the state. And because Amy works with updating the Omnibase, she really does know everybody in the state. She works I can't tell you how diligently Amy digs through school websites to find librarian changes so that when we send out updates for passwords or anything, Amy has already updated and her success is yielded by fewer bounces that Dennis has to deal with. Yes. So Amy just hit 10 years here with us but has a history with Omaha Public Library and Amy has a background in not only information science, but um, information technology. She has two master's degrees. Um, then we have Kathy Hatterman, and some of you are getting messages from Kathy. This, is, this picture is taken from one of Kathy's Book Face Fridays. So I tried to incorporate those in introducing you to our staff. Kathy sends out weekly lists to highlight items that we have in our collection. So you will see her name, and I wanted you to know this is an actual book face where you can see Kathy's face. <laughs> um, those come from her. Laura Mooney, I took this picture from her Facebook. I hope she doesn't mind. It's a lovely picture. Laura joined us just a little over a year ago. Is that right? That's and correct. Comes to us from History, Nebraska, and Laura just got her 25-year service award with the state. So just because she's new here, she comes to us with great background. And I'll let Mary tell you more about what Laura does, but I want to introduce you to her because Laura sometimes works at the reference desk as she is right now. Yeah. So you may hear her name. And Laura is one of two Lauras we have. We always have duplicate names here. So <laughs> it's 
And I come from a Linda Lori Lisa family, so I know the Lindas and Lori's and the Lisa's. And uh, anyway, Laura, it's really great to have Laura on our staff. She has great, great background. Linda Klaus, this is one of her book face where it shows her whole face. Um, Linda works with interlibrary loan really primarily and also works at the reference desk. So uh, we used to have two Lindas and now we're down to one. So when you call for Linda, she will be the one who can walk you through um, is interlibrary loan during Christmas? How is that going to work um, when schools are closed? Just at, and Linda is always available either by email or phone um, and is a good person to ask all those interlibrary loan questions about. She's also really excellent at finding digital documents mm -hmm. and she has a, a real sleuthing, especially <laughs> journal articles, ability to find those things. So it's, if Linda can't find it, it's not out there, I don't think. So she's a, a valuable member of our team from that uh, perspective to help you all with those. Um, and interlibrary loan is available to schools and public libraries who really don't have the means and the resources to do that. So um, that keeps us busy there. Our Mackenzie just joined us a little over a year ago. I think two years in April will be their anniversary. And Mackenzie is baptized in book clubs. So I know many of you know their name, but I wanted you to see what they look like. So Mackenzie came to us recently from another from a law library, but is fresher out of library school than most of us, <laughs> and um, is a Lincoln native, also is a pet sitter on the side, so loves animals as we all do, all of us here at this table, um, and a big animal lover. So she's very good at that. <laughs> yeah, Mackenzie does book club spotlights every other week, and is really familiar with our collection mm -hmm. in, incredibly for how long they have not been here has really got a good sense of our collection uh, we try to focus on nebraska titles nebraska authors nebraska settings and those in our listing all have a little red nebraska outline but if you've got a question about something about the book club mackenzie is really the uh, great first place to start Mackenzie also works with our job line and calendar updates. And so in many of those updates were mentioned, um, those websites he mentioned, Mackenzie is a part of keeping those updates. So that's what Mackenzie looks like. There's Mary and one of <laughs> Mary's book club or book face Fridays. And I loved that book. And I love that uh, I read that on an airplane one day. Uh, Mary will tell you more about what she does, but Mary and I work closely together, I think, of our two as being kind of hand in hand. Yes. So I'll let Mary talk about what she does, but that's what Mary's looks like, and you can see her also. So um, to highlight our services, Vern created this page for us, and it's not the whole of the page, it's just the top of it, but you can search for book club kits to borrow from us if you are a librarian. You call yourself a librarian in the school or the organization where you are. Um, I should clarify, it does need to be a library or a school library or identify yourself as a library. You can search by reading level, number of copies, Perhaps you want to show a DVD after you read it. You can search, if you scroll down on this web page, the Nebraska 150. When we had our sesquicentennial, there was a list that one of our staff helped to create to highlight 150 books of significance to Nebraska. Um, we try to provide questions, discussion questions. Um, if you have a talking book user in your book club, we will show you those books that are available. Book clubs are not going away, and I double-checked our circulation. I asked Mackenzie if they had any idea how many we circulated. Way under guessed. <laughs> it's a thousand, over a thousand copies a month, wow. not titles. Wow. Um, so, yeah, how many and, titles do we have now? We have twenty-two, over twenty-two hundred titles in the collection, um, and that includes down to reading level, third grade. Graphic novels, nonfiction, fiction. Uh, Spanish? It's really, there are some Spanish, yes, <laughs> thank you. We just included some Spanish titles. Um, because we were being asked, and it was, we took a shot in the dark and got some classics and some children's Spanish titles. We'll see how those go. That's a new territory for us to venture into. So um, that is probably 
I think all of us have touched book club kits in some way. Mary and Amy have helped me shop for books, mm -hmm. at book sales. There was a time when we primarily used used copies. I'm going to keep moving on here. Okay, so book clubs are big, big, big. <laughs> In addition to book clubs, Book Club Wiki describes all the other libraries that are willing to share their books. And Vern has done an amazing job creating a search, so if we don't have it, you can tell which other library has it that would be willing to share. So it's a statewide effort, and it's a unique, own, it's own little interlibrary loan system of who's going to lend multiple copies of books. And do the systems have book club kits Correct. as well? Yeah, all four like systems system. do, yeah. so they're all listed there. I think I tried to get them all. Those are all the libraries in the state that say, yes, we're going to be willing to share. And because they all list their books in different ways, mm -hmm. Vern and I have had to partner to suss out those titles for the search engine, but we've, we've made, you've made it work. I've just helped if you've made it work. <laughs> Our Amy does Book Face Fridays with Tessa, and this I just picked a couple of my favorites. This is our book uh, shop across the street, Francie and Finch, and sometimes they're just so spot on. They delight me. So uh, Amy provides with Tessa uh, every Friday a Book Face Friday, and I think they've been at it for four or five years now. Mm -hmm. I'd say five. It has it, yeah. So this was one of my favorites, and that's the view from my office window, and Leslie and Megan work there. I feel like Mr. Rogers, there are people in my neighborhood and I adore them. So that's that's a very great book face Friday. And this was a particularly wonderful one Amy did when she was taking her kids to school and ran out to get this picture and had people staring at her. So Amy goes to great lengths to get these book face Fridays and some are just really worth celebrating. Books and Series database is in joint uh, conjunction with the Talking Book and Braille staff. They had lists and lists and lists of books, and I went to Vern in 2006, I think, and said, let's, let's automate this. So Vern, this is another of Vern's pages where you can search by the author, the book title, or the series title. So Bosch or um, Stephanie Plum or Mitford. Um, if you don't remember the order of books and it's important to you. Some for some it's not important, but um, we have people who then let us know that our lists are out of date, need to be added, or maybe they question our order, and we really work hard to keep that up to date. Fantastic Fiction is a really excellent database, and we certainly can't compete with that. But this database also includes the Talking Book and Braille, digital Braille numbers, the DB numbers. Mm -hmm. So that's the enhancement this one is included. Um, the online catalog, Mary maybe wants to talk more about this, but this is the link to our collection, and you can request books from here, and you can see the Ask a Librarian on the top right, so I wanted to highlight that. Mary's put more work into that than I, so I just point that out. You can get to this from our front page. Here was Rod's Friday Reads. Um, several of us participate in reviewing books every Friday, and Amy um, uh, coordinates who is responsible for which week. And then Tessa also posts that in our public media, so our team coordinates this service. Uh, here's what the interlibrary loan request form looks like that Linda works with. Again, this is a Vern form that Vern has created with and tweaked and tweaked when there's a something, could you do this, could you add that, could you change this, Vern will do that. So um, that is what the interlibrary loan request form looks like for those of you who use that service. Mackenzie helps post our jobs page, which Vern mentioned, for the contiguous states. And something we added recently are the jobs, you'll notice them on the left, that allow remote working, which is a new part of our world now. So that could be anywhere and defies that contiguous state requirement. Mackenzie posts things on our calendar. You can post things on our calendar right under January. See the link to add a list, add, a, add to this, add an item. Yeah, thank you for your far <laughs> side post. Um, so you can see, we'd like to plan something at our library. Oh, there's already a couple other things planned that day. That might not be a good time. Or NLA is going on, or there's spring workshops. This will allow you to know what's going on throughout the state in terms of other library events, planning, conventions. 
The other important library directory Vern mentioned is the way you can search to see who's the who's the director of the Beatrice Public Library, who's the director of, you can see their hours and their emails. And so you have access to all of this because of the work you do to submit your information to us and Amy does to make sure it's accurate. Can I jump in with yes, a, you may. a note there? One of the features that I, I hope people are aware of is that you can, Enter a city name followed by PL for public library and find the library quickly that way. You may not know the actual name of the library or how to spell it, but right. that makes it a quick shortcut. That is excellent to mention because we have eight lead libraries, nine lead libraries, and then several memorial libraries. Um, so they're not all named. And some that are hard to spell, Struckman, Bates, comes to mind. Yeah, <laughs> Kravitz. Um, yeah, right. So this is a wonderful website. Vern mentions searching by city is an excellent way to find what you're looking for. And then lastly, my team, and that's why I gave you all the pictures. Those are the faith, those are the faces that match the voices that will answer the phone when you call the library commission at that 800 number. And that's the basic email you can use for questions. You could text us there, you could visit us. But I wanted to introduce you to the folks who are the voice behind the phone call and never a record, well, uh, never a answering machine of any sort, unless we're closed. Yeah. But there will always be a human voice. And I believe we always all say our names. So yeah, you'll know, I think we do. You'll know who we are when you call and now you know what we look like. <laughs> so I'll let Mary have time. Oh, we've got plenty of time. Um, let's see, do I need the mouse? Um, no, you should use that. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Four>. <laughs> All right. I'm Mary Sowers. I'm the Government Information Services Librarian and Supervisor at the Library Commission. Um, so um, there are two people who work with me on my team. Uh, Bonnie Hensel is the State Document Staff Assistant, and Laura Mooney, our, our newest and Government Services Administrative Technician, um, is also doing, you know, uh, crossing lines <laughs> into uh, the reference desk. Um, so Bonnie used to help us on the reference desk, but uh, bowed out of that, and now Lori, uh, Laura is helping um, do things. Um, and just to put faces with names. Um, oh, you found my photo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, me, uh, Bonnie, and Laura. Uh, just so if you do call uh, for government services, uh, you'll probably most likely get me, but also you might get Bonnie or Laura. So again, like Lisa said, uh, we love putting faces with names. And so this way you can, uh, you can do that. Um, here at the Commission uh, in Government Information Services, the Nebraska Publications Clearinghouse is by far the largest part of our service umbrella. Um, like uh, Rod mentioned earlier, the state legislature created the Nebraska Publications Clearinghouse in 1972, making it a service of the Library Commission and its purpose is to collect and provide access to all state agency publications released to the public. Um, and this service is for all Nebraska citizens, staff of Nebraska libraries, state agencies, and the Nebraska legislature. Um, we do get calls from state agencies asking for their own publications. And so that is part of our purpose in collecting them. Yeah, we do not distribute or redistribute these publications widely, um, at least not back to the general public, but we do send copies to the Nebraska State Archives and the Library of Congress. Um, at the moment, we currently have 190,000 print items in the uh, Clearinghouse Collection. Um, the Clearinghouse Collection also operates and oversees the Nebraska Publications Depository Program. And actually, I was going to show you what the Clearinghouse page looks like. But, you know, just to give you, yeah, there it is, a little delayed there. Um, with 
various things that you can go in and take a look at, but that is uh, the main page for the clearinghouse. You can also get to it by clicking on the government documents flyout menu here. Should be able to click the, 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 on the um, PowerPoint at the bottom and talk about that. Then go to the left one. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. There we go. Yep. Okay, and then I was going to move on to um, the depository program uh, is a part of the clearinghouse, uh, including the clearinghouse. There are 17 state documents depository libraries around the state. As, and as part of that depository library, all within the same state statute created in 1972 for the clearinghouse, all Nebraska state agencies are required by state statute to send three print copies of each of their publications to the clearinghouse. So if you've ever wondered, how do you get, or how do we get all of these publications? The agencies are required by state statute to send them to us. And it's only three, it used to be four. Yeah, it, that's correct. Yeah, before okay. the days of online access, um, they did have to send four print copies. And um, now it's three because a lot of them have already posted these publications on their own website and they have a URL. So they send us the URL and then we pull that in. Mm -hmm. And we not only have a print copy, but then we add um, a URL to the catalog record um, for those um, items. So. Um, all documents uh, in the Clearinghouse collection receive, received are available for request through our online catalog. Um, or if there's a URL, uh, like I just mentioned, in the URL link in the catalog record, you can have in instant access to the document by clicking on the link. So I'm going to go back here. So I can get this mouse to work. It's been, I'm going to put it on something that might help. There we go. <laughs> um, up here at the top of our main web page um, is our quick access to the library catalog. Um, I happen to know a particular document number this morning, so I'm just going to type that in. So you can take a look at what a um, state documents catalog record looks like. And It'll just a brief record will that pops up, and if there's more more than one, there will be uh, several in a list. But then um, we click on details, we'll give you a more detailed look at the catalog record. And like this particular one, I wanted to show especially because it does have a web link at the bottom of the record. And if we have a URL available for all of these documents, um, it will be at the bottom like this. And so it's all very consistent. Yeah. And we don't maintain those URLs, so this is the, the agencies that send them to us. No, they, they once they come and just tell us where to go. Um, so we're not maintaining all of these online. Yeah, no, that's yes. correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, the agency that, like, will be another thing for Vernon. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, the, uh, the agencies maintain their own on their own website, but once we pull it into our catalog, then that becomes the libraries uh, or the library commission. The clearing houses, um, we have to maintain those. Yeah. And so um, all of our government documents will have this URL that starts out with govdocs.nebraska.gov and then usually epubs slash epubs and the call number um, in this particular case, the E5700. That, yeah. So if you click on that link in the uh, Mandarin uh, database in a catalog, online catalog, it will bring up the document itself immediately so that you have immediate access to it. You can download it by clicking on the download button or you can print it off if that is what you need. So that is that is um, something that we've worked really, really hard to um, enhance um, over the years. And uh, I will touch on that part again a little bit later in my what I'm doing. So. Um, Back to this. Um, we also have, um, and again, this is a Vern item that helped us get here. Um, he helped us redesign a page that we called Nebraska State Agency Publications Online. If you are interested in a quick way to get to a particular state agency's publications, you go to this little drop down menu on this page. Um, you can click on any of the agencies. It will list 
items not only that we have on our servers, but more likely they're going to be on the um, state agency's website. This particular agency is Department of Agriculture, and this is their cattle feeders directory. Mm -hmm. This is something that they maintain, and so by, um, main, our, by us maintaining the link on our page, and then you get to it, you get the most current information. So uh, I wanted to be sure and uh, point out this. Um, you can also get to our online catalog from that page. So there's lots of ways that you can get around um, getting to state documents just from this page alone. Okay, um, the Library Commission is also part of the federal depository. Um, there are, um, let's see, 10 other depositories in the state. Uh, we do collect federal government publications, some of us more than others. The Commission only currently receives about 2% selection of the materials made available through the program. The largest collection here in the state is at uh, University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and they are our regional depository. So they oversee the rest of the federal depositories here in Nebraska. Okay. Um, actually, I need to update. Um, yeah, a, a couple of uh, libraries have dropped out in the last couple of years, so I need to update this page. Things like this are always good for finding what you need to, to fix. Yeah. Here. Okay. Um, government services also provides reference um, services um, and pretty much part of the information services group as a whole, but we do also just specialize, specialize in government document reference work. Um, we answer reference questions about state government and its publications. Um, we do research projects related to various things like, for example, the most recent one I've had is uh, a research project about uh, prisoner release after uh, serving good time. And um, so that usually includes searching the various bills to put it into place and uh, any related uh, information and news uh, afterwards. So feel free to call us or send, uh, you can always send your question in writing to the um, email address there, nlc.ask at nebraska.gov. And um, if it doesn't come directly to me, depending on the day, someone in the information services team will see it and make sure that it gets um, directed to the right person and answered in a timely manner. So. Um, something else that we do as part of the documents program is what I call scan on demand. Um, if you find a document in our catalog that does not have a link to an online version, um, send us the request and um, we take these requests as a scan on demand opportunity to scan the item, add it to the catalog, and make it made, uh, available immediately to you, but not only to you, but by adding it to the catalog, we make it immediately available to everyone. So that's an important part of what we do. Um, the other couple of things that we do, uh, one of which is new since this was done 15 years ago. Um, <laughs> the first one that is not new is uh, What's Up Doc? And this is an electronic blog and publication from the Commission Clearinghouse Service. And we list all of the newest state. Uh, we, don't do, we don't include federal anymore because we're not adding new items to the federal collection. But we do uh, let you know what we've received at the Library Commission Clearinghouse uh, in the last two months. Um, it used to be a monthly, and uh, it's since become a bi-monthly, uh, a little bit easier to maintain. Now, not only do I provide links to the actual item in the blog post itself, but I have embedded, uh, and again, much with the help of, and thank you, of Vern, <laughs> uh, I embed the document itself. So again, you can see the document immediately. You can download it and print it, or you can save it. You know, up to you. But uh, this is the most current one. I, I will have a new one out there later this week. 
you know, for the um, months of uh, November and December. And then uh, the new blog post that I started several years ago is called Book Briefs. Um, it also is bi-monthly because the Clearinghouse receives documents from every state agency, including the Nebraska um, University of Nebraska Press. They are a state agency, so they send us books that we choose uh, for the collection. And then um, I go through and I add uh, a picture that is courtesy of the press website, um, but also title, author, any book awards that it might have received, and the uh, synopsis uh, of the book, also courtesy of the press website. So we've gotten <coughs> lots of requests for um, checkouts of these books from libraries and librarians for their patrons based on this um, book briefs. Uh, blog post. So um, let's, let's get back to here. Let's see how we do. Oh, we're oh, nice. good. Yeah. We started a little after like after ten. So yeah. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go as long as it takes to get through everything we're talking about. I know um, Mary's the last one to speak today. Um, and mm -hmm. then if you all do have any questions, type in the questions section and go to webinar interface. Anything you want to know more about the commission um, for the people that are here today. Remember, next week mm -hmm. we've got part two with um, four other departments. So. Sounds good. Hold your questions for them for next week. Yeah. <laughs> um, two last things for me. Um, as a vast extension of Scan on Demand, um, when I first started working here, um, actually I will start my 12th year here next week. Um, Nebraska, I call this the Nebraska State Document Scanning Project. Um, Laura Mooney, um, her primary job is not only um, federal documents, uh, what few that we get of those, um, her primary job is to scan state documents that have not previously been scanned and digitized. Mm -hmm. And so um, when she first started here almost a year and a half ago, uh, we were still in the A's and she has now turned the corner, you know, kind of, sort of, um, <laughs> around the, the corner of the stacks um, to, the, and she is now in the D's. Oh, wow. Yeah, so she is making. Wow, that's a lot of yes, scanning stuff that needs to be scanned. It is <laughs> lots, yeah. So probably thousands of items that, you know, just since she has started working here. But we want to make as much as possible available online so that people have instant access to it. If they find it, and a lot of times if they're doing just a Google search, um, again, thanks to Vern, um, their search may uh, pick up on something that we have in our catalog and uh, they can click on it and then click on the URL uh, and get that document uh, instantaneously, which is you know, a, a real help to people. And especially during the pandemic, that was an, uh, a real advantage, you know, especially when it came to like the governor's executive orders. We have those on the Nebraska Access <laughs> website. Those were our number one hit, mm -hmm. and they got uh, downloaded uh, a lot, <laughs> thousands of times, you know. So anyway, uh, the very last thing I wanted to mention that falls under government services is the Nebraska Public Documents website. Um, it is currently, this was um, created in 2006 and 2007 and was a um, collaboration between the Library Commission, the Nebraska State Historical Society, which is now History Nebraska, <coughs> excuse me, University of Nebraska Lincoln, and the University of Nebraska Omaha. And this was a collaborative effort to um, provide digital access to historic annual reports that had been published and bound together since the 1870s um, through 1956. And originally the collaboration purchased microfilm of these items from the New York Public Library. And then um, students at the UNL uh, campus went through and digitized them. Um, unfortunately, at that time, the digitization characteristics and access was limited. It did a great job for what they had at the time, but the technology has evolved. So um, in 
2019, uh, former uh, employee Lori Sailors went through and scanned, rescanned every single item that we currently had of mm -hmm. the Nebraska Public Documents and redigitized, which meant that they got re OCR made much more searchable. Um, since then, we have been doing lots of cleanup and Vern has figured out how to do uh, much better OCR uh, technology on these documents and so has re ocr all of them. Um, also, in the meantime, we have located and added missing items from the collection, um, some that were already in our catalog, in our own uh, clearinghouse collection, but others that had come to us from uh, donations of old documents and old bound items, you know. So um, we're very eagerly waiting, uh, awaiting the new website. And the, the current one is being hosted at UNL, um, but once we get everything finished on our end, then they will turn over um, hosting to us oh. and we will be hosting the new Nebraska Public Documents website. So hopefully sometime later this year. Yeah. yeah. So that's all for me. Uh, feel free to contact us anytime if you have questions or in need of a document. Yeah. Um, let's go back to the slides. There we go. There we go. <laughs> no, it's okay. All right. All right. So that is our. Um, there we go. Uh, does anybody have any questions? That is our part one of our Meet the NLC session um, today, talking about library commission in general, our computer services, information services, and government information services. Does anyone have any questions? You can type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, see if there's anybody has anything you want to ask. I didn't see anything during the show. That's okay. If not, you do know where to reach us here, obviously. <laughs> um, and I will pop open this and see what you have there. Our uh, contact page for um, <clears throat> the Regional Commission and all of our different departments and all of our staff is here. And if you don't know who to call, please just call. And yes. Just yes. Let us know yes. what you need, and we'll be sure you get connected to the right person to help you call one of our main numbers one here and they'll know where to send you to. Yes. Yep. You'll talk to one of those people whose picture I showed yep. and you'll, now you'll say, then you'll know what we look like. No. So you just got some thank yous coming in. Yeah. What is the Amy question for seven years? Yeah, I'm going to have to do, um, hang on, I'm going to have to adjust something. I had technical Krista, Krista's been having technical trouble during our presentation today. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yes. All right. If I could just say one more thing, never hesitate to call us. Really, please don't hesitate to call while we're here in the office. Our job is to help you. Yes. To make your jobs easier. Ah, there it is. Okay, yes. Um, we got thank you, fancy staff and presenters. Um, different Amy said thank you for all the help you provided over the years. It's nice to have faces to put to the names of Amy Kaufman. But Amy Owen from here said yes. Um, book face has been going for seven years. Seven years. Wow. Thank you. Amy. As of this March, it'll be seven years. Shoot, I knew it'd been a long yeah. time. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to in any way just say all we do are these. These are. These are a lot of the things we do. I thought of two more things we do that I had yeah. forgotten to talk about. So um, uh, 
uh, Amy, thank you, Amy. Yeah. Amy's been with us. Amy just got her ten-year award. Mm -hmm. Amy, you were supposed to be in an eye appointment. <laughs> she's left. She's it was oh. before. She quit that okay. before. She's gone. It's okay. <laughs> Shoot. Um, but we want we want to help you. We want to make your jobs in your librarianship easier, either by checking out books to you, answering questions, providing CE, making a book club collection for you, um, providing a document. Sometimes it's a little hand holding. Sometimes yeah, it's just yeah. this situ yeah. well, and we all do that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So please, we'd I, I'd like you to think that calling us is a good idea, and that yes. we could be helpful, and that you'll find the person who can help you solve whatever it is that you're having trouble solving. Call us. Whenever I describe to people who don't know what I do, don't understand. Mm -hmm. libraries and stuff and I said what my big thing that I described that I do I work for the National Library Commission oh commission oh my gosh and mm -hmm. we help librarians do their jobs mm -hmm. yes um mm -hmm. we make we do whatever we can to give you um uh, training resources consulting mm -hmm. uh grants we'll talk about some of that next week um yeah everything and anything you can think of that a librarian might need to do in the state we're here for to help you do that and, and do better and serve your communities um, as the best way we can. If exactly. you get thank yous from your community members, <clears throat> then we've all done our job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. And Vern's certainly done his job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we tease Vern that he can't ever retire. <laughs> we would be lost without him. Yeah. That goes for you too, Rod. <laughs> yes, you too, Rod. Yeah. I just gotta Bring in some someone to mentor to teach everything you know to. Yeah. No, you don't transfer just, knowledge. Yes, don't get to go. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can take over. No, no, no. <laughs> no, nothing like the human touch. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I think that's it then. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Rod, for coming in remotely. Um, uh, for us this morning. Mm -hmm. I am going to um, talk to our Encompass Live website. website. <laughs> um, if you use your search engine of choice and just type in Encompass Live, we are the first and only thing that comes up. Nobody's allowed to use that name. I'm not copyrighted or trademarked it, but <laughs> <laughs> for now, as you can see, it's just us. Um, and that will bring us to our, new, our main page and our archive page. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Um, so here you have our upcoming shows. I mentioned earlier about recording. Today's show is recorded. All of our recordings are posted to the Nebraska Library Commission's YouTube channel for our archives. The slides will be available too through our SlideShare account. Um, these are upcoming shows. And um, next week is the second half of today's, Meet the NLC Part 2, where you'll be hearing from me talking about library development. Uh, Tessa Terry, our communications coordinator, uh, Gabe Kramer, director of our talking book and braille service, and Deb Rodrigo's, our technology and access services director. So that's the other four main departments um, at the Nebraska Library Commission. So please do register and sign up and join us for um, those um, that session. And there's our upcoming shows for January and February. Uh, but the archives are right here beneath our um, upcoming shows. <clears throat> Most recent one at the top of the page, so that's the one from last week, before um, last year's. <laughs> um, today's will be posted, the stage program will be there by the end of the day tomorrow with a link to the slides, so you'll be able to watch it. Everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me directly to you, letting you know that it's available. Uh, we also push our um, things out to our social media. We have up here, you can see, um, which page? we have a Facebook page, we use... Um, Instagram and Twitter, that's all the things we use so far. Uh, and we use a hashtag of, um, let's see if I have one here, yeah. Encump Live hashtag. This is the one we log in, but this is our, um, here's our reminder to log into me. Oh, here's a meet these um, presenters. Um, reminder about today's show, and here's your, here's the notice about the recording from last week's going up. So if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there or follow our hashtag Encump Live on the um, other uh, media. I'm gonna get back to the page here. <laughs> there. there we go. Um, and while we're on our archives page, I do wanna show you there is a search feature here. So if you're wondering if we did a show on any particular topic, 
We've got 15 years of them. <laughs> we probably have done something. You can do a search. Um, you can do search the whole archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want just something very current. Um, just for, um, but if you are searching the full show archives, do just pay attention to the original broadcast date. As I said, I'm going to scroll. Um, these all have um, the date when they were originally done. Um, many of the shows will be fine to still watch. Um, good resources, um, useful information. They stand the test of time. But some things will become old and outdated. Um, resources may have changed drastically. Some may no longer exist. Mm -hmm. um, links may be broken. We do not have um, <clears throat> the staff to check, double check links and things on here. So if you do find something broken, let me know. And we can on a case by case basis fix that. Um, people may not work at the same place where they worked at when they first you know, presented for us, um, so do pay attention. So just pay attention to that original broadcast date if you do watch anything older um, on here. For Nebraska Library um, staff and um, board members, you can earn continuing education credits for both watching our live shows here and the recordings. So um, do be aware of that if you're trying to earn CE court credits towards um, your certification for your boards or your libraries and your library for your boards and your library staff and your accreditation, which those are both needed for your uh, library itself. You can earn CE credits for watching the um, recordings and the live shows. <laughs> all right, so that wraps it up for today. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you all for being here. Thank Good you. Good to see you, Rod. Happy anniversary. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank you. Yes. Happy <laughs> anniversary, yes. Uh, 15 years ago today, well, today, this week, mm -hmm. was the first show. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right, and um, we'll hopefully see you next week or on a future episode of Cup of Slide. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.